So, our emu died. Read it about 24 hours after finding them hatched out and we were absolutely elated. Just so excited to see one more, get one more chance after Bert accidentally killed or something happened to the, the white emu. The problem was it was 100% preventable. So let me tell you about what happened. Oh man. <gasps> oh man. It's a blonde. Wow. <laughs> oh. Oh my goodness. Hey. You gonna take care of this one? At this point, we had to decide. Should we risk it and let Bert try again to raise an emu chick safely? Or should we just take the chicken side so we could care for it? Get under there. You really gonna do it? I need to put him in the incubator. I really hate to see him end up like the other one. So we just had a, a white emu that died. It hatched out, you saw it in our last video, hatched out, thought everything was good. We were, had some different activities throughout the day. We came back that evening and he had wandered three feet over or he had died and the emu moved him over. We're not sure exactly what happened, but we don't know if we can trust Bert right now with another chick. There's only one other egg left after this blonde one just hatched. We don't know. We do want to give him the emus ultimately, but first few days when he's sitting on them, I just don't know what the weight is like on these emus, if he's smashing them or if he's able to keep them warm. And so I think it's best we put him inside in an incubator, warm him up, ultimately move him over with the emus and the chicks until he's good. And this last egg is done. There's only a couple days left on this last egg and then we could give him back to him and he can raise him. But I think for a few days, we're gonna have to take this baby away just to keep it safe because we can't trust him right now. He's trying to get in there and get more. Welcome to the farm, little Amy. Well, it would have been so perfect. We had a, a standard hatch out and then we had a blonde hatch out in the incubator. And then we had a white one hatch out. We thought, oh man, that'll be perfect. It'd be so easy to tell them apart. <laughs> Unfortunately, the white one died and now we have another blonde. So we've got two blondes and a standard here. So we'll have to put a zip tie around their leg or something uh, to indicate one from the other, just so we can tell them apart as they grow up. Good job, Bert. So we just got in a whole big package from Hungry Root. They are sponsoring today's video. Wow. And we love working with them because it is difficult for us to eat healthy and quickly with all the things that we're doing on the farm. Our fridge is full. It's got meals, it's got snacks, it's got grab and go breakfast, just perfect for us. So a lot of things are just real simple grab and go snacks for the kids. But today we're gonna work on making a chicken nugget and potato meal and show you how simple and great it tastes. Hungry Root is the easiest way to eat healthy. They send you fresh, high quality groceries, simple recipes, and essential supplements. It's like your personal assistant for healthy living. Just take a fun, short quiz and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, so Nothing spicy for us. Then they'll build you a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week and then give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to use. Each order is fully customizable so you can take their suggestions or choose anything you want. What do you think? We got some broccoli and potatoes and chicken fingers, chicken nuggets. It's really good. Good. Mmm. Tastes good actually. <laughs> oh man, they've got a cheesecake dessert here. So the meal's great. Really mm. simple quick and easy to make. All this food, we love it. So thank you so much to Hungry Root and you can get some for yourself. And so the first 100 people to use my code WHITEHOUSE40 will get 40% off their first grocery order with Hungry Root. So just click on the link in the show notes or scan the QR code and then use my code WHITEHOUSE40 for 40% off. Mm, very fudgy. After finding the emu hatched out, we decided to bring him in. I know you wanna raise him right now, bud, but we're gonna have to take him right now. We'll get him back to you in a, maybe a week or so. We'll just go put him in an incubator, make sure he stays warm for the first couple days, and then we'll give him back to his dad to raise him. Hey, Bamboo. Got another email. Hey, hey Batman. <laughs> this is where it's like our first thing. Yeah, we're gonna go put them in the incubator. 
We didn't want to leave this up to chance with Bert. We didn't know what happened with the white emu. So we brought him in and put him in this little Barato Lumia 16 incubator. We got our little buddy here. So he's going to go into this incubator. We've got a, just a bigger tabletop here, this Barato Lumia 16. This is where we hatched out our our first emu egg this year. And so we'll put him down in here to stay warm for the next day. He's still wet. Oh, he's still wet. So he needs to dry off and then we can let him out. He's gonna try to get out of here. It's a little short for an emu, but it'll keep him warm and safe for the next day until we let him out. Now this incubator is a little small. He can sit in there. But he can't really stand up a lot. He can't walk around in there. And while it's not ideal, at least it allows him to get dried off for the first 24 hours. We were in here getting ready to go to church on a Sunday morning. Becky saw him hitting his head and said, let's get him moved over. I don't want him to have any leg issues. I didn't really want to move him at the time because we weren't going to be here and I'd rather be around when it happens, but I agreed. And then I said, get a, get a towel for him. I need like a little towel or something for him to curl up. It's time to move into a bigger spot. I had a towel I think that was like this and then Becky went and found this towel right here and I didn't think anything about it but we got it ready and we put the emu in this little container like we had with the previous two this winter and so this is where everything went wrong or where we failed this emu and caused a big fight between Becky and I and it's neither one of us made our decisions Without thinking of the best interests of the emu, we, we wanted to get the emu in this container. We wanted to keep the emu warm, but then allow him to walk around. So when we put these together, we put a little heat lamp on here. We put a little material down there so it's not, it's slick down there so that way he can walk around. If we would have either not put a towel in or if we would have just gotten a better towel. This towel had some torn parts on it. I don't know if it was actually tattered and torn at the time or if the emu did this I'm not sure but we hung it in right here using this clip hung it down like we had with the previous emus and so we'd hang it down there and then that way the emu could tuck in around it so it'd be just like being with Bert would get to tuck in a little bit so it'd be warm but then also have the comfort of some shelter because in the past they've they've cried all throughout the night and they're they're pretty noisy the previous two that we had in here and they did just fine, but when we gave them a towel, then they were able to tuck in and they were a lot more comforted. But since we weren't here, we should have either just left the towel out or put it in, just put it in on the ground or gotten a better towel. The emu with his toes must have hooked into this, this material, got wrapped around it and strangled itself while we were gone. So when we got back from church and lunch, we found a dead emu and we were just in shock. I was so upset. I gave Becky a hard time. She she knew it was a fluke. I knew it was a fluke, but I was just frustrated with how the situation played out and I was I reacted harshly and it's better now. We've talked it out, but it definitely was a tough moment in our relationship. I just wanted the best for this emu. She wanted the best for this emu, but I think we just rushed into it. We made a quick decision to give the, the emu a better place to move around. And while we weren't here to keep an eye on it at the time, I, it's just, my goodness. The chances of just all of this happening right after just losing another baby emu, I was just so frustrated. So Becky and I have, have worked it out and things are okay. But there's one egg left under Bert right now and he's starting to get feisty. He was starting to to pick on Peekaboo, his mate, I think wanted to breed some more, and so we moved her over in with Bamboo so he would just be left alone. Bert would just be able to focus on that egg. It's at day 53 now, so we'll see if it hatches out. If it doesn't, we still have our standard and our blonde emus that hatched out already this season, but this was just a freak accident that wish we could have done it differently, but it is the way that it is. Anything today. I let them know you're there too to make them do something. Woo, woo, woo. I can't whistle.
Now Bert is sitting outside, so safe to say he's given up on the egg. And it's at day 59, so probably wasn't going to hatch anyways. I think he's done. Not bad for his first year. He hatched out a couple. But he might be just a rotten egg that he broke earlier, but it sinks. Yeah, probably time to take it to the compost pile. Mm -hmm. Now, what should we do about the two younger emus? I'm afraid. I'm afraid of doing anything. They're doing so good right now. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? The plan was to move the chicks in here, but that was only if others hatched out and he could raise them all together. And They're already pretty well established. They're one and two months old, so. They're doing really good and with the meat birds. They're doing really good over there, so. The one problem we've got is here is, uh, is peekaboo. So peekaboo has laid all those eggs, 30 eggs this year. You can see feathers missing on her. The two emus that we moved out to the horse pasture, they're looking great. I showed a shot of Ernie out there and he has feathers missing on front of his chest and even a patch on his back. People asked about that, what's going on there. It's just something that happens this time of year is some of the emus strip some of their feathers. I don't know if it's kind of a molt, but also kind of a breeding thing. Now this was when we had bamboo in here and he just scared her to death. He was trying to breed with her or trying to fight with her and he, he didn't actually pull any of the feathers, but he would just run her into the fence and she would end up rubbing off all these feathers. And now she's just shaky and looking so rough. So we've got to get her back in good health. So she's got some open wounds. I think she rubbed against the fence and it opened up some different areas under her little wing and under parts of her body. So I need to spray it and just make sure it's closed off from being infected. She's very shaky. So we have had bamboo separated over here. So he's been blocked off from here because he was bullying her. So we've got bamboo there. We'd like to move her over here and then we can move Bert out with the other emus. So Bert has a zip tie on his foot. Ernie does not. Ernie's got the feathers missing. <laughs> oh, she's gonna pull them off. There we go. Two brothers are bet happy to be back together. So I just need to check on this egg, see if anything was actually gonna hatch, or maybe it was maybe it was bad all along. That was a bad egg. That wasn't gonna hatch anyway, so feel better about that now that we didn't wait any longer. So now we can get peekaboo over. Move to our old spot. There you go. So here's Bamboo, our original emu. How you doing, bud? He's had quite a time. He, we initially moved him in with peekaboo. Thought they'd be good friends. He didn't do well out in the horse yard. He got bullied by the, the boys and he just stayed by himself. He got real thin. So we kept him in here. I think we'll just keep him in here from now on because he doesn't do well out with everyone else. So we can let the two little ones, they can have this area to run around. Man, they grow quick. This guy or girl is already about a month old and is just so big, oh my gosh. A lot easier to carry though than the, the big one. Oh, all right, so we're not moving them over full time quite yet, but we want them to get a, a bigger space to run around. So we're going to move them into the emu yard now that we've moved yeah, bamboo over. Yeah. So let's move these two in there, let them run around. We'll have them in there during the day, and then we'll we'll bring them back with these chickens at night, just so they have a shelter. We can let them run here. Uh oh. Are you sure about that? What do you think, bamboo? Little guy. No. All right, let him go. <laughs> it sure hurts to lose two emu chicks in two days, but thankfully we have two emus that hatched out this year and are running with our kids. You like baby emu? So there's joy even in the sad times. Pet him, Isaiah. Right here, this big guy. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Have you ever seen emu wings? There's his little wings. They don't fly, but they have little wings.